32. Now, did I say that right? I don't know. But I have a translator here to help me. Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. So, how did I do? <laughs> Mont Blanc. Um, <laughs> I, I would say something about French spelling and pronunciation, but I speak English, so... Uh, <laughs> Pull the log out of my own eye before I pull the dust out of the French language's eye. <laughs> English is even more difficult. So, and I heard that on very good authority from a French foreign exchange student that uh, the English pronunciation is interesting. So this pen is uh, the only one of its brand that I own. I'm, I'm avoiding it because I'm gun shy about the name. Mont Blanc. I uh, just so you can see that it is legit. There, there's the bird splat. So that apparently has to do with a, it's, you know, a mount, snow on top of a mountain. It's not really a bird splat, but that's what people call it. So, um, Mont Blanc. is known for luxury pens, uh, luxury items. Uh, they have been a fountain pen manufacturer for a very long time. They're in Germany. I didn't really look up much about the company. I don't know why. Uh, they still exist. They still make fountain pens. Uh, one of the more famous ones is the... Mm, get its name right. Meisterstück 149. I think that's right. Um, there's some kind of a like a Luke Skywalker or Sky Saber. Something that has like a clear plasticky glassy thing on it. Anyway, so th they, they're still around. They make ink. They make fountain pens. They make luxury goods. But this this is a pen from the 1960s. I uh, I wrote information down on the back sides of a pens in use, so we'll just look there. This is actually the same uh, precious resin used on the Mont Blanc 140 Mont Blanc 149, the Meisterstück. Um, it, it what makes it special is it's kind of scratch proof, not totally, but and it'll stay shiny. I guess it's especially hardened. I didn't get too far into the into the process, but uh, you've seen a few other pens using the same resin. The uh, Caveco V14S was one of my favorites of this ilk that made with that same resin. Now, uh, if we look it over, it's a very streamlined design. You know, the, this model did appear uh, beginning in the 40s, late 40s. But uh, the earlier versions aren't nearly as squared off and streamlined as this. This is just kind of the style in the 60s. Uh, unscrew it. It has a one source called it a demi hooded nib. Another source calls it a hooded nib. Uh, either way, it's an extra fine nib. This is a gold nib. I'll show you how I know that here when I put the magnifier on. This is a really sorry excuse for an ink window because I honestly, when I hold it up like this, hold it against the very bright light, I can kind of see that. Maybe I'm running low on ink, but I can't really tell. It's not a very good ink window. I, I wish they would have not put the threads over it. I think it would have been fine because I actually think some of these um, blue ink windows on some of the pens I have are very pretty, and I wish pens now had some blue ink windows. Uh, ebonite feed. Um, and then here, this is another place that calls for the magnifier. It gives the brand and it gives the number. There was a 31 at the time. That was... Uh, steel nib pen. I suppose that was aimed more at students. It looked a lot like this. I, In fact, I will link to a review of that done by uh, Ron Mia Pens. I'm going to put on the magnifier and we'll just close in on a few details, not too many. So first of all, the snowflake. Oh my. All right, so the snowflake on the piston turning knob. Um, the ones I looked at weren't quite like this. You know, it's... This is really hard to show. But you can see it's kind of raised there. And it's slightly yellowed. A lot of the ones I saw were more like on the cap, just very embedded in the plastic and much more well done. Uh, I will also turn your attention to right here. So here is number 32. That's how I know what model it is. And then, of course, the name of the pen. Oops, name of the pen is the rest of it. Uh, not much else interesting. I mean, the clip is very plain. The uh, Where the 
piston turning knob attaches is, you know, it's pretty obvious, but it's really restrained. Well, under the microscope, that pen looks dusty. All right, I'm going to lower the microscope so this is more steady for the looking at the nib. So 585, that tells you that it is a 14 karat gold nib. Uh, some Hiroshizuku on it, well, Yamabudo. Ebonite feed. And one of the ones I was looking at was an oblique broad, and I thought, wow, that would be so cool, but, you know, it is what it is. A uh, quick story while I'm taking the magnifier off. When I bought this pen, this was actually my second choice. Uh, you may remember me saying good things a while back about the uh, Aurora, oops, uh, about, uh, sorry, <laughs> about myuberpens.com, and, uh, I had ordered a, uh, an Aurora 88 from them, which got smooshed in the mail. And they offered me a replacement pen. This was the pen I chose. And I have to say, it was second place when I ordered it. I like it a lot. This is a nice pen. Uh, extra fine nib. I don't use them all the time, but I do like an extra fine nib. And I need a bookmark. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to mix a little writing sample and whatnot with this. So this is a Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. And I have an extra fine nib. And the ink is Pilot Hiroshizuku, which I did not look up the pronunciation for the Hiroshizuku. Sorry, I got lost in my spelling. Yamabudo. I was going to and then I just totally forgot. I think it is worth pointing out that I have not written with this pen in probably a week at least because I uh, just haven't gotten around to filming this review and I got kind of scared that uh, I'd run out of ink before I got around to doing the review so yeah. But you can see it started up like a champ. I didn't cheat and come in ahead of time just to make sure it was right and I just sat down started writing now uh, I'll tell you a little bit about this nib the semi hooded nib kind of got to be the rage because of the Parker 51 that was a fully hooded nib this is semi hooded or as one source I looked at called it demi hooded kind of like the Columbus 65 it's supposed to be somewhat flexible um, I'm not that great at art, but it kind of does this. So this, wow, that's a horrible drawing. <laughs> this part, the part that's visible here, is raised up above the rest of the nib. It's actually, uh, sort of reminds me of a Pilot Falcon nib on the actual Falcon pen. Uh, this ink is actually, I wrote this name down. Did I say ink? I'm sorry. I meant nib. Inter, whoops, intarsia. In, I, I'll pronounce it correctly here in a second. Intarsia feta. Intarsia feta. That uh, basically means semi-flexible nib. Um, spring nib, I guess. And it is. Um, that's usually the next thing I do in my reviews anyway. And that's the idea behind demi hooded, uh, is just you know, try and get some flex out of a out of a Parker Fifty One. You won't because you have the grip section in the way. Here, it actually can flex. Now, not a lot. I'll grant you that. You know, here it is unflexed, and I wouldn't push it too far, but. I think it's doing a pretty good job. Enough line variation to be interesting. This is a nice pen to write with. And I don't know the ink capacity, but it, it, the ink lasts a long time. Uh, the first time I filled it, I was starting, I was getting to the point of, could you just empty out already so I can go use a different pen? I'm bored with you. So I think that's, well, good. <laughs> uh, let's see, wetness and flow. 
which won't be a problem. I mean, this pen keeps up like a champ. It may be an extra fine, but it's very smooth. And it lays down a pretty good amount of ink. It's wet. As you can, now again, this is partly due to the ink that's in it. But you can get a hint of that from the smear test. No pressure. That isn't bad. And then here is with a bit of pressure. So this really does lay down a lot of ink. It's a good pen. Uh, I read... One of my sources said it was a student pen. I, I find that hard to believe uh, just because the gold nib, but maybe. And, you know, I'm, I've am i got this modern view of Mont Blanc in my mind, but, you know, the company has evolved. It's, it's worked its way into that luxury niche, um, and it's not quite the pens for the people like it used to be let's say all righty and let's see wetness and flow and then i always do reverse writing i as always because that's not a thing i ever do in my real life this will be a surprise to me and to you Woo! now scratchy is all get out but I'd call that like an ultra extra fine. <laughs> Groovy. <clears throat> and the nib is yeah, pretty nice nib. So let us turn to our quote. By the way, before I uh, actually turn to the quote, I just want to mention this is a little bit more affordable pen. Um, I don't particularly care for the looks of the Meister Stuck 149 anyway um, and then I look at its costs I'm like yeah <laughs> good thing it doesn't appeal to me because I'm not paying that for a pen but I never thought I would actually own a pen of this brand and Mont Blanc. now I do uh, sometimes vintage is a way to make these pens a little bit more affordable that Maybe you can't afford their modern version, but you can get the vintage version. Uh, these you can, I just did a quick look around at prices. I guess some people say they can find them for 50 bucks on up. So, uh, yeah. So let's do our quote. So my uh, true feelings on this pen, um, is it a, does it have value? Uh, again, that's, that's a personal thing. I, I like it a lot. I will say that. Um, I will say that my first impressions of it were very colored because I was so excited to get that Aurora 88, that vintage Aurora 88. And it got smushed. And so this was kind of the... Oh, here's your consolation prize. I mean, no blame to myuberpens.com at all. They did the best they could with the postal service they had. I, uh, they even, this pen was a little bit more than the, the Aurora, and they, they ate the cost. I mean, they were very open. They communicated with me. Uh, I'm very happy with them. But, you know, it's that disappointment because I was so excited to get that Aurora 88 and then, sorry, got snooked in the mail. And I got this pen instead, and I just, that excitement wasn't there. So, um, it that's part of why it's taken me so long to do this review, is I just, to get over that. Now that I have a vintage Aurora 88, and yes, it is everything I hoped it would be, and you've already seen that review, <laughs> I, I'm finally over that emotional block, and, uh, you know, I, I can start appreciating this pen for what it is, and it is a very nice pen. Uh, one of these days, you know, to 
so I don't run out of pens. <laughs> I need to do a video rodeo where I talk about some of these semi and demi and fully hooded nib pens of this look that I really like. And maybe just compare a bunch of them, so we'll see. So, hope that was interesting. I hope the wind noise wasn't too bad. I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it's a super, super windy day, and I have most of the windows open. I closed the one here that you can't see uh, while I film, but yeah. <laughs> North Dakota and wind. We are the Saudi Arabia of wind. So, hope that was interesting. Hope it was useful. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.